And our essential question today, as I mentioned, what led to the development of the atomic bomb? Now, generally speaking, what steps have to occur for a piece of technology, any technology, to be developed? What are some things that have to happen? Materials required. Materials, good. Alright, what else? Funding. Funding. Money. Okay, what else? Workers. Alright, workers. And not only just workers, but what kind of workers? Scientists. Scientists, good. People with that knowledge base that have the ability to develop this technology. What else? The accuracy of what they're making. Okay. Testing, the accuracy, good. Alright, what else? There's one more I want you to get. Military. What's that again? Military. Okay, military. You need protection. Security. Do we need specific areas that we're going to that we're going to look at that technology? Facilities. Facilities. Yep. Facilities. All right. All these things, guys and girls, are aspects that that lead to the development of technology, and we're going to look at these aspects today. Specifically, looking at the atomic bomb, we're going to look at materials. We're going to look at whether or not. Um, we should begin development on a, a nuclear weapon. We'll talk about money there. We'll look at some specific individuals, some scientists that led, that helped develop or helped um, create an inno innovation that led to nuclear weapons. We'll talk about testing. And then we'll also talk about the relationship between scientists and the military as well. As well as some facilities, we'll look at two specific places today. Um, one will be where the atomic bomb was eventually put together, and the other is where um, a, lar a large part of the development occurred. And so this kind of takes us to the first slide today, which is creating the atomic bomb. Now I want to make sure in our mental timeline, we've talked, we've talked about the war in Europe, we've went from beginning to end there, we've talked about the war in the Pacific from, be from beginning to end. I want you to think in your mental timeline, we're going past Pearl Harbor, all the way back to the rise of Hitler in Nazi Germany. Now as Hitler was coming to power in 1933, not only was he promoting um, German nationalism, what else was he doing to a certain group of people? Discriminating, okay. Jews specifically, excuse me, specifically, does anyone remember the Nuremberg Laws from world history? You do? Does anybody remember anything specific about the Nuremberg Laws? The Jews couldn't work for like, uh, or their books, the, whatever the books that Jews wrote had to be taken out of the library and everything, like, all the culture had to be stripped from the town and stuff. Okay, good, John. The culture had to be stripped. These laws... Basically, it was used to oppress the Jewish population in Germany. They couldn't marry someone of German descent. They couldn't have, they talked about sexual relations. They weren't allowed to employ a Jewish person. And specifically relating to scientists, Jews weren't allowed to have positions of civil service. Now, does anybody know what a civil service position is? Working for the government. Okay, yeah, exactly, Adam. Working for the government, working for the state. A large portion of these scientists, or, or basically most scientists, were employed at state universities where they would develop research and, and further along science. And so, once these Nuremberg laws were in place, these Jewish scientists, they, they were out of a job. They were looking for, looking for employment, and so we see a large exodus 
of Jewish scientists leaving Germany and coming to the United States. You probably remember this guy, pretty famous, Albert Einstein, was a German immigrant. Leo Zillard is somebody that's going to be important that we'll talk about today that is also a German immigrant. And then Enrico Fermi has kind of a different story. He is from Italy. Now, what is going on during this time in the 1930s with Italy? <coughs> yeah, exactly. Mussolini, the rise in fascism. Enrico Fermi is going to say, hey, I'm getting out of Italy. He is going to leave and come to the United States as well. All three of these individuals um, left because they were being oppressed in some way or another, and they're going to find that they come to the United States, they're going to be able to call that place home, while also bringing their ideas and their scientific research to the United States. And that's going to be very important with what we'll be talking about today. Okay. A significant development occurs in 1938. Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, in 1938, successfully demonstrate a process called nuclear fission, and specifically nuclear fission of the uranium atom. Now, does anybody understand what this means? Okay, okay exactly. This picture here, you have a neutron. A neutron hits a target nucleus. And like Adam said, it splits the atom, and so you have two products, which are called fission products. Along with this, you have two neutrons that are created from the initial contact. And so nuclear fission is when a nucleus splits into several smaller fragments, and this occurs when a neutron hits that target nucleus. Now thinking... But when you try to remember, remember, remember this, think in terms of you're hitting a target nucleus. We talk about nuclear weapons, or it hits the, the target nucleus of a specific atom, the uranium, the uranium atom. We're talking about nuclear weapons and the, eventually the atomic bomb. You see the correlation there? That's why, they were, that's why it was called this. And to better demonstrate this image, here's a quick video. Zillard calculated that if you hit an atom with a neutron, as the atom divided, it would release not just energy, but two or three more neutrons. And those neutrons might then be free to break apart further atoms. And every time that happened, a tiny bit of mass could be converted into a vast amount of energy. Energy that at every step of the chain multiplied, multiplied. a chain reaction. So typically you would end up with two extra neutrons coming out. So those two extra neutrons can then induce another fission process and produce two more neutrons. So you have four neutrons. That would then go to eight, 16, 32. You have this multiplicative chain reaction process and the potential for that was immediately seen because each of these processes produces a large amount of energy. All right, as you can see, nuclear fission, remember, neutron hitting a target nucleus, it's going to split that nucleus and develop two fission products. And the important thing to understand is this is the first step in the creation of a nuclear weapon or an atomic bomb. In the beginning of that clip, it was probably hard to hear, the, uh, the narrator said Ziller calculated. That guy that we were talking about, Leo Ziller, he is going to be the gentleman that develops this in theory in the United States. Now, as you can see, he isn't the one that successfully demonstrates this. And so, he is working in the same line as these two gentlemen, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann. The difference is, they're still in Germany. And so, it's important to understand that when they come to the United States, they understand that the scientists and the military are working together and that hey, this might be a problem. They've created the first step and potentially something that could be as devastating as, as the world has ever seen. Emily? You ready? Right. The second thing that occurs here, Ziller. 
He goes to his friend Einstein. He understands that the Germans have been able to, to demonstrate nuclear fission, and he's worried. He knows what's, what's going on in Germany. He knows the power that Hitler could potentially have and the devastating effects it might have on his home country as well as other countries that are against or allied countries that are against Germany. And so he tells Einstein, hey, throw your weight around, talk to the president, talk to FDR, tell him of this, tell him the importance of this, tell him that it might be used to develop a new powerful bomb and urge him to start developing some experimental work in the United States. 